this particular road has run into a spot of difficulty. It's this wall of solid rock. And of course, they're going to have to blast it out of the way. But even today, that's not the easiest thing in the world to do, particularly if there are one or two houses around. Alfred Nobel, who was of course himself a Swede, first developed his explosive mixture and called it dynamite well over a hundred years ago. And since then there have been great changes in explosive techniques, but there are still considerable problems. There was a time, for example, when you had to ignite your explosive charge with simple fuses like this. So you'd set out a row of detonators. Those are devices which cause a big enough bang to set off the main explosive charge. Then you would light the fuse and run. <laughs> All very dramatic, but the trouble with the fuses is that no one's quite sure how they're going to burn. And once you've lit the end, you've lost all control over it. So it's hardly surprising that people who set off bangs professionally for their living looked around for some safer way of doing it. Electricity. Now, this piece of rock has been prepared for blasting, and each of these holes would normally be filled with high explosive. Obviously, for safety reasons, they're not now. Into each one goes a detonator. The detonators are all wired up together, and they're all connected to this central firing cable you wheel away to a safe distance. Then after you've checked the uh, resistance on the wire, you connect it up to the firing box, like that. Just a couple of turns. And now we're ready for charging. Press the green button. And fire. all nice and controlled and basically that's the system that's used with some modifications all over the world. But even using electricity can cause problems because the explosives can be fired accidentally by a random electric signal. It could come for example from a power station or power lines, a radio transmitter, a radar station, even a thunderstorm can generate sufficient charge in those cables to set off an explosion. And then there's water. Water halts the dreams of the explosives man because it can make things go so terribly wrong. So for several years now, they've been searching for a new firing system that has all the control of electricity with none of its drawbacks. And now the very first company ever founded by Alfred Nobel has come up with an answer. And this is it. It's a simple plastic tube coated inside with a secret pyrotechnic powder. And it's completely safe, so safe I can actually fire off this fuse with this starting pistol while I'm holding it in my hand without coming to any harm. Just watch that end. Let's go through that again. First, the starting pistol lit the powder at one end of the fuse. And what happened then was pretty dramatic. A shockwave of burning powder hurtled through the plastic tubing at virtually the speed of sound and shot a stab of flame out the other end. In practice, that end of the fuse is up against a detonator at the bottom of a hole drilled into the rock. In goes the explosive charge, and as you can hear, that hole is full of water. There's no longer any electricity for the water to short circuit, but what about that vital flame? Well, don't worry, they say. At the speed it's going, that flame will blast into the detonator and set it off no matter what. At least, that's the theory. And now, an actual explosion as the road builders try to shatter part of this solid rock bed. And this is the first time that this new firing system has been used on this sort of work. Just cover the area with tarpaulins to stop the rock getting airborne, and we're all set. Are we ready then? Right. I feel a bit like uh, Guy Fawkes must have wished it felt like. Fire. 